DJP, I'm from uh, originally from Springfield, Missouri. I'm a professional turntablist. My style of blending, it's very diverse. I I don't like to just focus on one thing because I get bored. I claim to be a hip hop DJ because I approach the turntables as an instrument. My style, I would say, is more on the on the blending level, like a hip hop and a rock track. But try to find the two things that really make sense, like the Pat Benatar on the far side. You know, she keeps on passing me by. Well, love is a battlefield. It totally makes sense, and not only does it make sense, but it goes right together. The pieces of the puzzle fit. I think it's cool for for people to dig. That's that's the key to this is digging, going through, finding records that don't make sense with other records, and making them make sense. I shouldn't have left you without a strong bond to step to. But yeah, you know what else? I don't know what else I can say about Danny, but man, he has gotten his uh, his chance in life and he's excelled and he's taken off. And uh, you know, the thing is that there's a lot of people in the city that we live in that have tried to really. I don't want to say purposely like plot the two of us against each other, but I mean, you just do the math. We live in Springfield, Missouri. It's not that big of a city. There's barely room for the both of us in this town to earn a, a decent living doing what we do. We have remained good friends through clubs opening, clubs closing, um, people trying to take our jobs, people that come up to me and shake my hand, and I love what you do. I wish Danny wasn't playing with you, and vice versa, that do the same to him. They think that I'm the rap DJ, and he's like the crazy 80s dude, and they have no idea how we mesh together and, and, our, and our similarities. We're both hip-hop DJs. We both we love hip-hop. Run. No matter what is being mixed on the turntables, we're still hip-hop DJs. You know, we approach the turntable as an instrument. And, you know, these cats, I mean, Larry can, can vouch for me on this. I've taken so much shit from people and kids in this area for mixing rock and 80s with hip-hop. And yet, that's exactly what hip-hop is. You that know, is it's a hop. sample from all kinds of different music. It's from jazz, rock, you name it. It, it comes from kid records. It comes from everything. I just happened to do it live, and I was getting a diss for that. You know, and it was like, that this comes from people who just only listen to hip-hop music and want to prove how hip-hop they are. And yeah, it's they, that attitude. They'd be embarrassed to be like, oh, I like a rock record. When they don't realize maybe the gangster record they're listening to, the drums are Fleetwood Mac. You know, they, they just don't get it, man. They don't have a clue. And, and people have hated on him and dissed on him, but bottom line is... A lot of those dudes are still just playing records in little bars, and he's in Rolling Stone magazine and, you know, blowing up like he is. So what happened Wednesday night when you was at the club? Oh, I did my thing, but man, I preached there people too. They just still standing around on the wall holding it up? Yep, just standing around, dude. That's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with that, is it? Hell yeah, when you up there trying to run this motherfucker. <laughs> and your house. elbows are hurting. And you're like, man, why am I even wasting my energy on this? But you know what? There, but you know what? There were people there that were getting it. Well, see, that's there's the always there's always that group of people on the sidelines that do get it. You've been there and seen it. Yeah. We'll start a circle and be boy. That's the reason why I kind of quit because then you get to playing a song, I ain't the way I want to hear it. Well, and they're just standing there. They, they want you to put the needle on the record and be lazy. Well, I can be lazy, but that's what I'm saying. But but you and I both. You have to take a pillow and a suitcase to go. Exactly. I still want to keep the same old school me because it's like that's still a culture just with me. Anybody else be oh it's dead and gone. You still have them people in the corner that are still wanting to have that feeling that culture. When down here there is no culture. Like you say, you get up there and mad mix and you and Larry's tearing up stuff and you're flipping records and y'all. Everybody standing around like this. Dude, to them, honestly, the sad thing is, to them, it's just putting on a yeah, like a CD. They don't realize they, just, they don't realize that you have to time it yes. and the volumes have to be right. That everything it could get off beat. 
You know? Yeah. That's why I like that's why I like to fuck up once in a while. Cause Let you the motherfuckers the- know that you're doing it live. <laughs> I just do what I do. I'm, my goal is not to get signed. It's just to it, do shit. Man, no, it ain't my, my vision already encompasses a lot no, of no, things it, that you're talking about. No, no, it's not a matter about getting signed. Well, okay. I don't want you to be like, well, one day you can get signed, then you'll be no, successful. But the second the difference is truly going to be made is when people like you can take a step beyond that point in history. I just be myself. And whoever relates to me as an artist relates. They pay their five dollars. They fucking b-boy. They break. They drink. They chase bitches. They talk about fuck their job because that's what I talk about. But I'm saying I'm tapping into me at my face. And that's as far as it's ever going to go. And so if there's 50 people here, there's 5,000. I'm going to take myself as far as I can go for these motherfuckers who are here. I don't care about MTV, BET, VH1, any of that shit. If these motherfuckers come and buy my CD and have a good time and tell two of their friends every time I come here, it's going to grow at the pace that I feel is respectable. I live off of this I, shit. I, I'm not, I didn't start doing this for people like you. I started doing it because I loved this. I wanted to rap. I had some shit I had to get off my chest. Right. I was expressing myself. Right. I wanted to do art. I did it in my bedroom and I was happy with it then. And so why am I going to be less happy with it? Because you say do X, Y, and Z with it. You're not going to be more happy because I say anything. Then why should your opinion matter? It doesn't. It, it does not matter. Recollection of DJ P is when I was in Detroit with Jazzy Jeff, you know, the legendary, magnificent Jazzy Jeff. When I got there, P was on, on the wheels doing his thing, and he was like, I thought I was one of the only few DJs that play a little rock in my set. He did it in a way where it was like, oh shit, what the fuck is this dude doing? Creativity, man. I mean, that's our job. A DJ's job is to be creative and to be different. I like the fact that he brings another style to the table that that makes people want to watch him. And then if, with me backing him up, you know he got to be official. Mm-hmm.